He couldn't be here today. Um, but we did do the event on uh, August 30th, I think. Um, Yep, August 30th, Susie came out to meet with all our employees. A memo went to every employee on August 17th for their August 18th paychecks. Um, remember that last month we said that we asked for comparable coverage bids. That was a really good idea, Sherry, because they came back. Remember there were slight differences in the co-pays, et cetera. The new network had some different co-pays um, and different coverage amounts, not huge, but that was a concern. It was a 5% decrease instead of a 9.08% increase with our current plan. And Sherry recommended we ask Susie for exactly the same coverage, which she did. And that came back at a just over 4.5% decrease in premium amount. So we presented those two options to our employees. The memo strongly encouraged every employee to come speak individually with Susie. The big difference is that under the new plan, specialists in the Kankakee and the Watsika area could be seen without a referral, but any of the doctors in Chicago area would need a referral. We don't have that with our current plan. That's really process-wise the only, the only difference. Um, so we had, we have 81 employees on the insurance. Um, overall, I had responses from 58 of the 81. Okay, so right, 72%, which is really good. 19 of those chose not to come and meet with Susie. They signed a piece of paper that said they want to switch without talking to her, which is a little concerning, but they felt comfortable based on my memo. That is what it is. So overall, we took a vote that day of everyone who expressed an opinion. 57 people chose to switch network one wanted to retain the current <coughs> network. So overwhelmingly, 98% of our employees that expressed an opinion wish to choose. Hmm. So at this point, it's up to the committee to determine if, if you would like me to proceed with renewal under the new network. I would have suggested, uh, I suppose we need a motion. I would say so. Yeah. <clears throat> what do you think? Oh, I think so. I mean, they spoke. Uh, yeah, right. they spoke. The, the yeah. and it makes sense. Oh, yeah. well, I, would motion, I would make the motion. I ain't too sure all the language we need to add, but um, that we accept the, we uh, update. The update based off of the employee's information that, yeah. We renew with the new network. Right. Okay. Based, yeah. And, you know, we probably should have a little note about this is what the employees want to do. Right. Okay. That way we have less chance of getting shot at by somebody <laughs> else later. <laughs> less chance, not no chance. But right. Mm -hmm. Great turnout, though. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Really, for what we typically see, we usually see only about less than a 20% turnout of people. So I feel much better, much more comfortable with this. Yeah. I'll second his Okay. Yeah, motion and a second. Switch to the new network. Coinciding with employees. Vote. Any other questions? Go ahead and call the roll, Amanda. Alt. Yes. Bills. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Raymond. Yes. Anderson. Yes. <coughs> that motion passes. Go on to the full board. Anything else on Susie's? No, that's okay. it. We're going to go on to the opening of the insurance bids. Do we have representative from all three? We're from yeah. the same one. Yeah. And that would be swing. 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 Okay. And Randy, we know. So we got. Okay, okay with the committee. You want to let them give us a three, four, five minute 
spiel. Not pertaining to numbers wise, but if you want to just give us an overview of the company or anything, sure. Oregon Pass, and we'll move on. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we can move on. Here. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm Richard Swing. I'm born and raised in Cisna, and uh, I've been in insurance for. 25 years now, so, and we do a lot of commercial. As far as uh, we do, uh, the company that I work with, the agency that I work with, also does the city of Danville. The company that we brought in do 54 counties in the state of Illinois at this time, and what, how many, three or four hundred? Three hundred forty. Uh, uh, municipalities. So, or total, right? Yeah. So it's a very well-versed company that knows the needs of the counties, and uh, we've been with them for a year now or two, as far as our agencies are concerned. And we saw the need that, I mean, you know, maybe we could fill within this county with this company that's IPMG. If you have any questions or. I'm sure we will here shortly. <laughs> what, like uh, Mr. Spring mentioned, my name is Bob Spring. I'm with IPMG. IPMG is the administrator for the Illinois County's Risk Management Trust, which is the program that submitted the bid. Um, we are the largest insurer of counties in the state of Illinois, with over half of them currently. I've been doing it since 1983. Uh, I have uh, a, a, probably the most comprehensive service package when you look at the open door legal and law enforcement. Uh, jail audits, what we can, um, some of the services for um, sheriff's deputies, um, the full property appraisals that we include in our program. So um, all the coverages are included in the program and it's a comprehensive service plan. So uh, we just wanted to be here this morning just to uh, express our interest and answer any questions that there are any. Okay. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. I don't know anything about me now. <laughs> We're probably failing. <laughs> <able. laughs> going to open these. If I remember from last week or last month, we're not going to act on it until we review them thoroughly with uh, some help. I don't claim to be an insurance guy. We got Randy's, Dr. Schultz Insurance. Liability 69463. Wrongful employment practices, that's not on the board. 8701. Employee errors and omissions, 735. Auto 30154. Workers' Comp, 130, 123. Property, 28, 549. Crime, 455. Inland Marine, 8472. Who's the last one? Inland Marine. How much? $8,472. Total package,
Everything but workers' comp is a 5.5% decrease. Uh, workers' comp is a 30% increase, which nets you out to about an 8%. Randy, uh, uh, you know what our experience mod rating is now? I can look at it. I don't know where it is. I looked at it. It's uh, 1.37 effective 12.1. We were at 0 0.95 to 0.98 for years and years and years, and this year it went to 1.37. That's based on the last two hmm. years. of. And what will happen, if I understand correctly, and Randy, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that experience rating stays on for three years. So we're going to be living this for at least three years until that that year's history rolls off. Boy, that's real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there... Is it, do they break it down in the different areas where it's coming from? If it's uh, the bad sitting position that puts your fingers out of place? Or bad city? No, no it's no, our claims. No, sitting position. I, mean, I, know, I know it's causing its claims, but... Yeah. It's very clearly our claim history over the last two years. But yeah, I'm yeah, trying to figure yeah. out where the claim history. Yeah, I think as you go through this process, that one of the things you should look about, look at is is there any loss prevention, return to work services, anything like that. We never really had to do that before because almost never had any claims. But now, right? You know, I don't know what's changed, but something has changed, and you. You'd be well advised to look at some kind of program yeah. to offset that. Yeah, we know. Even the average consumer naturally always looks for a little extra of that. Right. And then so, yeah, that risk management thing yeah. plays in big time. <coughs> hmm. Mm -hmm. On three side. Uh, right. <coughs> so on the corkles. Yeah. This is why we have to. Yeah, they're not going to do that perfectly. Yeah, it'll be laid out a little bit. They just give you a bottom number. No, I'm not sure. This says proposed premiums package. I'm not sure what's included in the package. It's ninety-four thousand nine hundred fifty-three. Normally, normally, what most people say would be liability, property, and environment, crime, or what most people. That the workman's comp is always a separate thing. Right, and auto is usually separate. And that's not in here separate. Um, umbrella? Yeah, they just raised the limits then. 12360 Some companies will write that under the liability, and some companies will have okay. an umbrella and go higher yet. That would lower their liability premium compared to somebody who had higher limits on the underlying policy. Crime, 2,178. And above ground storage tank, 350. For a total of 109,841. But I don't see a workers' comp in here. There is one additional plan which, um, in speaking with uh, the rep over the last several weeks, she recommended a policy for inmate medical expense budget protection. protection. She said it's available and based on the history of our medical expense with the um, Inmate inmates population. population uh, she thought it might be something we would want to look at. Um, I don't see a... Here. Based on, you would, you would purchase based on an amount, $10,000 or $20,000 of coverage, whatever the coverage is. So that's, she's got a couple 
premium options here for $10,000 worth of coverage, $7,957 for $20,000 in coverage. No, that's the deductible. Yeah. I get it. The deductible. So it would, it would protect us. So a $10,000 deductible would be $7,957. 20000 would be 6716 So we'd pay everything up to that, to that and then they, they would pay us. everything after that. But my concern is I don't, I don't see workers' comp. Workers comp. No. And I don't see a separate number uh, for auto. It could be an appropriate in the liability. It could take the auto, the value of the autos and lump that into property and the liability into the liability. Yeah. Yeah, we're not making the yeah. a decision okay. today. It's going to be a lengthy process. That's why we're doing it in September now. The swings proposal. Okay. So the swing proposal is for package premium 144777 and workers comp 139318 for a total of 284096. Very close to the show total. So I think I feel a little more comfortable with that, but we're going to have to go through all the coverage and make sure. Are there any questions? Immediate questions from the committee? Anybody wants to be involved in going over it? Swing by the union's <coughs> office if we, after this and try to set up something, just not as a committee, but it's, it's going to take a lot of eyes. So. Got everything you need? <coughs> Anita? Yeah, for now. Perfect. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Move on to the FY18 budget. Since we opened the bids, we probably should do. I should have a motion yeah. to. I moved it. Motion to table. Postpone until the next meeting. Okay. Uh, motion to the floor. Further study. For further review. study. Yes. Further review. Further review. Thank you, Charlie. Yeah. Get rest. <laughs> further review. Thanks for uh, starting out all right. <laughs> I'm still Second trying to find Sherry. out. All in favor of tabling the insurance bids, say aye. 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 Opposed. That motion carries. Now we'll move on to the FY18 budget. Okay. Really the only change since the August 21st Special Finance Committee meeting was the impact of the change in group health insurance. Um, the portion, um, can you just stick that in Ernie's pile so that it's there and then Mike's. Yeah. Um, the savings to the general fund for that is uh, $35,000 so that the shortfall moves from $74,750 to $39,750 so about a $40,000 shortfall at this point in time. That figure is in here. You got the seven at the four. Yeah, it's right. If you look at here, oh. and then it's just one addition oh, of thirty-five, okay. and here's your total. That's the new one, then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, um, really, at this point, there are a few risks. There remain several risks. which I've outlined here. 
this um, budget as presented um, assumes only a $50,000 transfer from the farm fund to the capital fund. Now, um, the farm fund lease tentatively approved at the management special meeting would um, lease the farm for a total of about $109,000. So we have budgeted a $100,000 transfer in next year from the farm fund to the general fund and a $50,000 transfer from the farm fund to the capital fund to fund capital projects. So what we're doing is eating into the reserve in the in the farm fund for next year. Um, <clears throat> so there is kind of an issue and we need to address with the capital fund. Um, let's see, yeah, I made copies for everyone. <clears throat> okay. There are two pages here, front and back. Um, the front is the capital budget as initially presented, right? And at that point, the um, management committee had recommended doing the courthouse parking lot for $250,000, the gel block locking mechanisms for 120 and the courthouse fire alarm for 80 there was nothing in for um, heat pumps in the admin building so expenditures of four hundred fifty thousand dollars which we don't have right so they weren't funded by three hundred and fifteen thousand dollars we then walk through on the august 21st meeting and this is what's on the back page a tentative uh, long-term capital plan based on the recommendations of Sheriff and Chris Drake. So that switched from next year um, the projects to $25,000 for heat pumps, $25,000 to reseal the parking lot in the admin building, and $100,000 to redo the south parking lot only at the courthouse. So instead of $450,000 in expenses next year, 150, so a reduction of 300,000. There is money if we assume a $50,000 transfer from the farm fund next year. There would be sufficient funds in the capital plan to fund those projects, and it would leave us with an ending balance in the capital fund of $35,000 at the end of next year. It doesn't resolve the long term plans, and you can see as the years go out what we run into there. But it does get us through next year and possibly the year after that. So the question is, do we want to change the, do we want to finalize this as our capital plan for FY18? Anything from the committee? I think we got to do that, some of this a little bit. I think we should do these projects that we have that she has recommended for this year or next year. The uh, heat pumps, resealing, courthouse too. Is there a plan going forward? It's a big ominous number. By 2023 when 314,000 in the hole now, I mean, doing the stuff for next year is great, but there's no... Right. <clears throat> I, uh, well, you see, who's on that committee that oversees this? You on that committee? Management. Oh, Larry has. Sherry is. Oh, yes, and oh. Charlie <laughs> Oh. I thought he meant a capital committee. Folks <laughs> are just trying to hide committee. from them because this is where it's all coming from. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yesterday at management, 
Chad McGinnis did say he was going to start looking for grants to fund the 2020 project of the replacement of the air conditioning unit at the courthouse. That's the $325,000 problem. So that could fix things, depending on his success. Um, it's a gamble. I, uh, mm -hmm. I also think there's grants out there for that that would help with the heat pumps. Hmm. I think we might have passed one of those by already, but I believe that there are grants well, out there for those. I think we did have those in place here a few years ago, didn't we? That's when we started uh, getting aggressive and replacing some that were still functioning. That we, I think we found out later the ones we put in were not the same as the old ones, and they weren't lasting as long, but you know what? I don't deal with that committee, so That's I true. just remember little pieces well, of information. Same with air conditions. <clears throat> I know a lot of places that had an old air conditioner for a long time. They put in a new one. Next thing you know, they got service issues on a constant basis because the new stuff is junk compared to what the old stuff was. Well, that's the problem right there. But that's what everybody wants to do. Okay. Yes, Sheriff. Uh, just a couple clarification points. The air conditioning unit, that was just talked to the uh, company that put that in train. So that was, I'm sure there's other options out there available if, and when that goes to put. Um, the heat pump issue, when Chris and I talked about it, was rather than, kind of what Russell was just saying, rather than starting a plan of replacing these if they're still working, let's let's just have a little money there to, if two or three of them go down in a year, we'd have money to replace them. But as far as just spending that money to replace something that's working, we didn't think that was the best idea right now. Okay. Thanks, Derek. I totally agree with that thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, sure, like here was a few years ago, we had the assessment on the floor here. The front doors open all the time and trying to keep some heat in there because there's conked out and it was cold in there in the middle of winter time. <laughs> so you got to be prepared for those type of little things, but yeah. At the same time, you never know where the problem's going to be because they're mechanical devices and people touch them all the time. And between the uh, <coughs> two things put together, you're going to have problems. What we've done and since I've been here is when a heat pump has a problem, we've called in a repairman to look at it and then evaluated the cost of repairing it to the cost of replacing it. Yeah. That's what we've done. Yeah, and that's what you got to do. That's I think that's a great idea. Okay. So we're looking to finalize this capital plan for 18 years. What, what's the committee's feeling here? We're going to spend it. Yeah. And so. Finalized is kind of a yeah. relevant term. It's not, nothing's finalized until it's posted. Uh, we have to have something in place there for Anita to keep pressing on with the numbers. Right. Well, the resealing will only get worse if you put it on further. Okay with that 18 capital plan, Sheriff? Yes. Um, the, uh, you know, over here I think the parking lots, well I know that they're in better shape. So you just continue to seal the cracks and reseal the entire surface. I think we're going to be all right for a while. But um, that 100,000 too is probably, we may get a little more than just that south lot out of that because there's the there's the uh, drive on the south side of the courthouse that's separated by a little berm area and into the parking lot. It may include that as well. Um, and that's the problem area right now. So if we can get that knocked out, um, the sheriff's parking in the north lot, 
can be done at a later time. And actually, the, what's in the best shape is the circle drive or half circle drive because it doesn't get used a lot on the west side of the courthouse. Okay. So this number that we had, Derek, was for pretty much the whole thing, and you're saying maybe it's a potential that we can get the main drive nor uh, north of the island that yes. separates. Yes. And uh, might be a much lesser number then. To just do that south lot, maybe. I mean, they. I think they gave us a quote of 250 to do the entire project, the south lot. Mm -hmm. When you take the square footage of the sheriff's parking and then the north lot is bigger than that south lot, so um, and that's the one that's crumbling on the south end of the south lot is the one that's basically black gravel in some spots of it. Yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty rough, but it don't get a lot of heavy traffic or anything, except for that one drive area. Yeah. So it's. Um, I'm happy with that plan. I mean, I everything else we should be good. Okay. We don't necessarily need a motion, but is that kind of the consensus of the committee for the 18 budget? Al, everything's subject to change. If Mike was here. He would want to know what our long-term plan is. Punt. Punt. Yeah. Here we go again. <laughs> I don't think there's any other options at this point in time. Yeah. Okay. So I yeah. think that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's fight this. Okay. Move forward. Okay. As for budgetary <laughs> guessing reasons. Okay. There's that. Well, it's going to turn into black gravel sooner or later, but again, it's, it's not blowing no far. All right. The next. The next. Move it. The next two, um, and this is this is a risk at this point. It's not finalized. It won't be finalized until after the September 19th ETSB meeting. It's uh, the joint dispatch fund. So even though it's not the general fund, if you look at the next page, um, in the general fund other department, there's a line item that I've highlighted for you, which is transfer to joint dispatch fund. That is the general funds funding of the dispatch center. So what this, um, what was initially budgeted was the same amount this year as the last three years, 163,382. In the discussions with Sheriff um, Mike McTaggart, Kyle, communication with the state um, finance administrator for 911, um, the discussions have revolved around an ETSB amount that could be transferred to joint dispatch. And following kind of that logic and talking that through with Sheriff and, and Sandy, there would be potential to possibly transfer 34% of joint dispatch costs from 911 and the telephone tax receipts. Their board has to review that. They have to be comfortable with their cash flow and approve it. We won't know that until September 19th. What this budget recommendation is, is that that goes through, so we'll all keep our fingers crossed, and then that increase from 911 gets split between the city of Watsika and the county. That's, that's the biggest risk at this point. It's, it's a reduction of $56,677. It is not in the minus 40, so if that occurs, we could be, we're golden. But, like I said, there's no, there's no guarantee of that right now. The other thing about joint dispatch, which is a huge risk, and so I've written it on the sheet as a huge risk, is it ignores a negative ruling on dispatch arbitration. It assumes we're going to win arbitration, yeah. <laughs> and they laugh. That's yeah. that's a right. cloud. And when is that supposed to be? That's been um, that was hour. due uh, May fourth. Okay, May. Mm -hmm. So, so what's the holdup? 
We have not gotten it back from the arbitrator yet. Our labor attorney is going to update us. Wow. I want deadlines like that. What? I want deadlines like that. You don't have to meet. Okay. What I can add on that is, um, well, first, the point of clarification. As of this minute, I am not the interim 911 coordinator. Uh, nothing has been officially set in place, but I am, I guess, working in an advisory capacity with uh, Sandy Drake, who is the uh, she's the assistant coordinator. Which, if you look at their bylaws, when the coordinator is not there, she's the coordinator, and she's been doing the day-to-day -day stuff since August 5th. Tomorrow. This budget will be put out via email to the six 911 ETSB board members with some explanation, explanations along with it so that they have uh, about 10 days to review it um, roughly before their uh, meeting on it. So um, I've gone over the numbers, I've gone over the numbers with Anita, I've gone over them with Sandy, and I think it's a very doable thing. That will be up to the ETSB board to decide if that's the route they want to go. Um, but it, it's definitely a, a doable situation, which kind of gets us back to where it was prior to 2014, where ETSB was paying a third of joint dispatch costs anyway. So. Sounds positive. Okay. okay. Okay, and then the last item I'd like us to get finalized today is the veterans budget. We listened to the presentation on that. Um, this is one. Where the county does have a line item authority to change the budget. Um, this was a big change, but it's important to remember this does not impact the general fund budget. They have a separate levy, so they have their own funding source. Um, this is the budget other than the revenue amount. I didn't get a new one sheet from them. It doesn't, this one doesn't have revenue in it. This is how, but it would be a, a levy of $50,000, an increase from their $30,000 levy. Um, you'll see my notes there. The max levy rate per the state statute is 0.03. Right now, the payable 2017 levy rate was 0 0.00604. So it, it, we'd move up to a 0 0.01. So well below the max of 0 0.03. So, and then it would be, it budgets increasing hours, office hours of that office from 12 hours Per week to 20 hours per week. So do you want me to move forward with this budget as presented? Should I put this one in as presented? And that's why it will hit the levy. And that's what would hit the levy, right. Property taxpayers and our 20, extra 20 grand for next year. Right. Or the following year. Yes, actually. it would. Okay. Hands we have any? I'm not agreeable to the salary at a 43.3 percent increase. I don't care if there's eight more hours added on there. That's ridiculous for a part-time job, in my opinion. I know I've asked this, but the clerk to clarify: county employee, non-county employee, and no, there's nothing that IMRF. Not no IMRF. I did check with IMRF. There's a lot of confusion around veterans, so I did do some um, investigation into that, asked some questions. I called IMRF. Every Veterans Commission can decide for themselves whether or not they wish to be a member of IMRF. Their board would have to do a rev resolution. There, there isn't one. Now, there is some risk in this in that it, the law clearly states she is not an employee of the county, but it also says that the county sets the salary. Well, it sets all the expenses. Um, 
She's paid as a contractor. She gets a 1099 at the end of the year. There is risk there to that organization, in my opinion, based on my history with labor law. They are not, they're not paying any employer taxes, employee withholding, et cetera. That would not, if the more hours, the greater the risk. Hmm. I would recommend to that board that they investigate then before they go those issues yeah. before they go any further. Yeah, because IRMF, they probably love to bring them in. You know, I, I had conversation with IMRF. More they don't them. care one way or another. It's just that there's been confusion, and this is one that is has been gray. And whether or not they bring one more employee in or not, I don't. Yeah. I don't know that it matters. But traditionally, anytime they get their hands on more revenue, they want it. <coughs> okay. Again, for a budgetary <coughs> number, what, what's the committee's feeling? Forty-three percent is awful damn high for only an eight-hour increase. I'm not sure what the right number would be. Well, even if it's our duty to decide what. Okay. Her value as, as an employee to that organization. Yeah, full-time employees have all that kind of money. My opinion is leave it flat. Okay. I have one opinion. Anybody else? Charlie? I disagree. Close. I feel that she has a sizable increase, I'm not going to say what it is, of what she's been doing, how much work, how much income it's brought to the county, her work, it's all outside money coming to the county from the Veterans Administration, and it behooves us to keep it moving that way and keeping her compensated for it. Well, I think I kind of like to see the difference here. It looks like, well, we've been levying thirty thousand. I don't quite like, see it here, but right. Looks like I just that's the top line, the property tax line, twenty-three. Okay. Then it went to twenty-six, 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 thirty-four this year, and now they're wanting to increase to fifty. Why don't we do a two percent increase like everybody else straight across the board got for a wage? It wasn't straight across the board, well, but, but you know what I mean, mm -hmm. on average. Okay. That'd be four thousand dollars. Okay. I think the math's flawed there, but <laughs> <laughs> it sounds what would two percent well, if, you, if you're looking at two percent of of a twenty-two thousand dollars, if you oh, you're saying from. overall budget two yeah, yeah, percent well, because yeah. there's another increase in in their budget. The last line for veterans assistance fund, the budget goes from sixty-three twenty-five to eleven three twenty-five. So that is eleven three twenty-five. <laughs> right. Okay. Oh, yeah. Exactly, does that entail? Should know, but the veterans assistance funds. Okay. Right. Uh, again, we don't necessarily need a motion, but we need to kind of have a consensus of what we're thinking. I wouldn't object to the increase in the veterans assistance fund, but I think 43 percent is my hang up. That's an awful lot. So I guess the bottom line, we need to know what to use for a figure. If we're going from a 30. Looking at potential 50, would it be easy, based off what we got here, just to put a 40 in? 
my thought about that veteran Parts, assistance levy. Parts. funds <clears throat> might be they step in and pay some immediate expenses for veterans if it's qualified, like they're suddenly sick or something, it would yeah. come in and pay the rent or the electricity bills and that kind of thing until they get back on their feet again. Set up their family type of thing. She's been working real hard on that kind of stuff, I know. How come there's still no revenues? That's it <coughs> just wasn't received from them. I'll have to get a new sheet from them that includes their revenues. That would have been helpful as well. <coughs> yeah, it would. Because they've had increased revenues right along every right. year for the last three years. Nothing there, so. But the question we're looking at, though, is what do we need to use that is going to be a dollar amount that's going to hit the levy? Isn't that where we really need to go? Well, because the rest of it's in the their own little organization. You're going to um, you can decide the salary. Yeah, the levy will be a result of what gets decided for the expenses, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the back answer. Okay. Um, now, the forty-three percent increase. Um, an eight-hour increase in time. If she's going from 12 hours to 20 hours, that's an eight. So the the 43 percent increase in salary is reflects a 67 percent increase in her hours worked. So uh, it's really less about the salary increase than it is about additional hours in the office. Okay. Again, get back. What does 40, plug in 40, does that, what does that do to the... So if uh, you're saying 40,000, um, yeah. so her yeah, okay. increase would go well her increase would be flat if you if you take the bottom line at 40 and you bat leave all other lines as is that would put her salary at twenty thousand dollars which her salary is this year at 21 162 and she'd be at a salary decrease for the year mm. that was four years you gotta move you gotta move <laughs> right you gotta drop okay. the other you know, make the right. last one down right yeah yeah, yeah. And, and not knowing what's in that one line, Charlie, that Veterans Assistance Fund, that's just... Could we... Because we when we're looking at... Kindly asked to get some revenue. And yeah, maybe something that was just a little over $3,000 is $11,000. Again, it's not necessary that we have to make a drop that date, but this date is going to pass the program. Yeah, yeah. Is it possible to get all the information we need for full board? That we can make yeah. a decision at full board? Oh, yeah. And get her, all her revenue numbers? Yeah, That's basically I would, I would suggest that they look at the veterans. People look at it and see if there's any way they can come with something livable that's, you know, that will stay with them only a 30% increase in a given year. Yeah. Well, I, I don't see why she isn't just her salary is at the two percent increase, which is an additional forty-two hundred dollars, I believe. Yeah. Something like that, not exact, but and that should compensate for an additional yeah. eight hours for right now. Don't you think? I think that's still a fairly good wage for a part-time job that isn't an all-day job. When's, My opinion. when's the next meeting of your guys' board, Charlie? Yeah. I, it's going to be sometime down the road. They don't like meet that often. But they could always meet. They could have a special meeting, I guess. Yeah. I'm not yeah. saying they will. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Suggest that to them or something if you want to. <coughs> okay. Is she in today? Is Jennifer in? No. I don't think so. It was no lights on. I don't know what her schedule is now. Who's there? Bob, Bob says yes. <laughs> Bob's a neighbor. He should know. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. You know. Yeah. I would think a 30% increase in a given year would be a plenty increase, even because I know there's more demand on services in that area. But 
how they break it down inside your budget line. I'm not going to go there, but a 30% increase, so yeah, I'm looking at the bottom line to the taxpayer through the county, property taxpayer. Yeah. All right. Maybe table it. I'll stop down there and talk to her, see if they can get us some revenue and some answers and maybe have a meeting prior to, I know that I can get the meeting before full board, but if we get some figures. Mm -hmm. I'd be happy with the revenue numbers and just, just by full board. Yeah. Okay. In fact, I thought she already had the revenue numbers. Mm -hmm. She very well may, we just don't. So. We've yeah. just never gotten them. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. We're going to I can yell a lot of answers, but right. we didn't expect anything to get uh, Again, there's a lot of outlying factors. That we're getting close. Yeah. That arbitration is, is going to be bad. Yeah. That's the bad part. That's, that. that's the bad part. Yeah. Yep. yeah. I have a feeling that's bad news when it comes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Do you have anything else on that budget nope. other than wait and see. Right. Uh, do we want to have a a meeting in the in the middle before well, the next? You know, we can kind if we see, see the really the need for it, I think we need to. Because but at the same time we can't say that we really need it right now, so the key will be after um E T S B it'll be after September nineteenth. Um, if you want to do one, maybe the 21st, be halfway. The only answer at that point would be ETSB. I, I don't know what to even say about arbitration and when we'll hear. And, and possibly we'd at least have some input from Jennifer on veterans. And then that would leave, I could plug in the capital stuff, that would be done, and then that would leave arbitration. Yeah, and you know, the 28th actually might be the ideal date because we'll probably do a P&P &P if there's anything up. I don't know if anything's happening with P&P. Mm -hmm. I'm going on but vacation now. You could have it without me. <laughs> Wait, Florida, I am. up the mess. I am. Okay. All week. I think we probably need to have put something on there, on the calendar. Yeah. As a potential? Yes. Yeah, I don't, it doesn't matter to me at this point. I don't have my calendar with me. So. Any dates you guys want to tentatively put in? Three of us are to be here for PMP. The 28th can't be. Sure. That's how we're going to do it. Yeah. Might be it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm up. Does that work for you, Sherry? I, I saved 100 it. bucks. Uh, we can either go before or after PMP. Immediately following. Immediately yeah. following. PMP usually doesn't yeah. take very long. Call it 10. Yeah, call it 10. Press Sorry, call it 10. Okay. Got that. Take care of. Yeah, we can put it on. If, it, if we don't get no answers, yeah. we can always cancel. We don't have to meet. So. All right, next. Again, on the agenda, discussion and action on the revolving loan fund resolution. Everybody have that in front of them, along with your program strategies. I would move for the adoption of this. And you're holding up what? Oh, the resolution. Okay. With the program strategies that we've been working on for the last four months, and I think it come out of committee that this is where we need to be. That came out of a uh, non-existent committee that or whatever you guys met and went over all of it again. Yeah. This was. Yep. together after our long last board meeting, I believe. Yeah, yeah, what do we have a, oh, 
Oh, you was missing, I think. Yeah, after this. During the special meeting? Yeah, the special meeting. And you came up with, this is what you like? It was recommended to finance. It was recommended to finance. And we are finance. We have a motion on the floor to accept the resolution and the program strategies. I'll second it. As it says. With a second is Charlie. Discussion. We still not sold on five hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. That's an awful lot of money when we got expenses coming up capital improvement. Well that's a lot of money. You know, it's I'd just be, I'd be a lot happier with hundred and fifty or two hundred and fifty thousand to start. I'll go with two fifty. Okay. Here's the thing, folks, you know, here about eight months ago we we decided to act from what the voter said and to raise money for public safety. And you know what the first thing that come out of everybody's mouth was? As soon as you get that tax money, you're going to be spending it on other things. Now we got a certain amount of tax money laying here for a given goal, and we're wanting to use it for different things. Now, are we sending the wrong message to the voter? Because this money comes to the federal government for a given reason. And now we're finding other reasons to use it. Well, we might need it for this. We might need it for that. I think we ought to keep it for the original reason that come to us. Just like other taxes when they come through later. The money did did start that way. I mean, it wasn't sent to us the last, when it finally, I mean, when they gave us this, it, it was no strings attached. I but, understand the, the intent was. Yeah, right. The intent was originally to use it for economic development in your neighborhood. Well, $250,000 is a good sum of money, Russell, and since there's not really anybody pounding the pavement down out there for it right at this exact moment, and as it's been said time and time again, the money can go back and forth. So if they need more than 250000 and it is in there, then it could probably be used for that. But to just set it all aside and say, here you go, when we're struggling right now, I just don't think that that's a wise choice and a wise decision on our part. We can still put it in there and borrow back from it. That's what I just said. <laughs> no, yeah. you didn't. You don't want to put it in. I'm saying put 500000 in it and then borrow back if we say that as a source. It. I don't see why we should. Yeah. We're supposed to show the public that we have these funds to loan in from this source of money. Your way won't show it this there. $250,000, a quarter of a million dollars is a, is a fine sum of it's money. It's a lot of money. It would go to your way, too. The same amount of money. If it don't, it goes either it. way. It's a large sum of money. The intent is not your way. Ours is. Well, yeah, it's still there. Exactly yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. It come for a reason. I'd say we ought to use it for that reason. Even if we're not using it tomorrow, or maybe we don't have plans on using it next week. But let's keep it there for that reason. Yeah. Opinion. We got some huge capital improvements coming up. This is a one-time thing. It's never going to happen again in my lifetime. I think we ought to set a little bit of it aside and. It's not setting it aside. It's setting it for other use. Sounds like the soda tax in Chicago, Chicago. as you stated. <laughs> We're never going to get it again. I don't want to see capital improvements <laughs> show any more red than it has to. The chances of us yeah. coming up with money in the next few years to fund capital improvements is slim to nil. Zero. And if you want to get it passed, I think we need to compromise on both sides. So. What do you mean if you, we want to get it passed? Well, I'm just saying. It, I mean, compromise is what's going to get this finally off the table and out the door. So. Landing it would be a compromise in my book, okay. but blending it back. It would. Yes. In my opinion. Why best, isn't it? In my opinion, the best compromise is when nobody's happy. <laughs> You're going to be Let's a board meeting. Work for nobody to be happy. Yeah. Yeah. This is your wife right. compromise <laughs> instead of your compromise. <laughs> but then you're happy and I'm not. <laughs> Nobody's got to be happy, Charlie. <laughs> okay. What? 250. Almost. And the other way is 249.999, right? Something like that. 
so somebody's happy. A motion and a second on the floor to adopt this as it sets. Pretty well. See what's tell you whether this boat's going to go, and then it's going to go to the full board, and I can just about tell you how that's going to get shook out. So, you have any other discussion today on the motion at hand? Seeing none. Amanda, call the roll, please. Oh, you have. Alt. Yes. Bills. Yes. Johnson. No. Raymond. No. Anderson. No. Motion fails. Still be on the. Mm -hmm. They'll be in front of the full board. In front of the full board, unless we. Is that going to be sufficient for everybody? It's going to go Tuesday and probably be removed for separate consideration and see how this thing's yes. going to happen. Again, if we split it up, we can always move it back. That's what everybody keeps saying. Same way the other way. I get that. But you know what? If we all dig our heels in the sand and we don't try to make a pattern, I right? we should yeah. be digging our heels in the sand. Yeah, if it's there, it's going to get budget be spent. Yeah, it's going to be spent. Either way, it's going to be spent. Either way, what? It'll be spent. No, it'll be laying that up, land out the other way. That's worked well for us. It, it has in some areas. And that's worked well for us. Five failures out of 15. That's a third. I don't think that's a, a positive statement. So why give $515,000 to fail instead of giving $250,000 to possibly fail? This is a different setup altogether. It is. This is a whole different setup than what failed. Completely different. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the biggest, the that. biggest failure was Howard Industries. Yeah. The biggest dollar amount was Howard Industries. And you know what? I well, guarantee you the people that. down in Milford 30 years ago that worked at Howard Industries, they did not think that was a failure. It kept that place open for another seven, eight years of not the biggest paid money, but you know what? It was good employment for those people. It's really a shame to see it gone. But that's where that money went. Gone. 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 It, gone. gone. it, it went into the neighborhood and surrounding it's neighborhoods. Gone. With no return, gone. We've always got return in the county, right? It's gone. County money's gone too at times, hasn't it? Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. We're going Can't wait to revisit it on Tuesday. That. Yeah. No, because you haven't answered my question. Yes, I no, have. No, it was explained here. Department head reports. Mindy, what do you got for us? Uh, so, uh, Lisa. I have nothing. D. Nothing. Working out well. Only the Friday. Any word on whether they'll actually pay it, though? the other 
figure out where I have to send somebody to school. We're going to be going about 12 weeks plus four of training, 16 weeks of having one deputy on day shift. So instead of six hours out of the day, we have 16 hours out of the day where there's only be one person on. So that's what I'm looking at right now anyway. Um, other than that, working with Andy and making sure dispatch keeps moving forward. Okay. Bob? Just had a, a, one employee resign from her last day. It was last Thursday, and I'm in the process of replacing her. So, working on that. Ken, yeah. Anything you want to add? I'll just see if I can refer to what <coughs> Russell said uh, about keeping uh, Howard in business. That's the kind of things that I think have to be considered. Uh, <coughs> the issue is not just money was handed and, and it was lost. There was four or five million dollars worth of payroll that came out in that time period that wouldn't have probably come out if they had closed that much yeah. earlier. There's so many extensions on a loan like that that gets made. We want to pay back. Why do we want to pay back so we can make the next one so we can do it all over again? You know why I mention that, Kenny, if you don't mind saying it, is because I remember back in those days I had friends that their family members worked down there and they were scared to death that it was going to shut down right now and they didn't know what they were going to be doing to keep the roof over their head. Then all of a sudden, that place was still going. And then later, you know, I'm not paying attention to what's going on in government. I realized, oh, they got a loan through the county. They kept that place going. And remembering all the little stuff of the people dealing with the issue on the street that worked there, you know, later you get to looking at it thinking, well, gee, yeah, it was a lot of money to see go out the window, but you know what? It all kept a lot more people solid in the neighborhood for many years after they went to that loan. But that type of thing is never black and white. Oh. It's just so many other factors. The other thing that I would say to uh, Dan and Sherry is I, I'm concerned that we're saying we're making a statement we'd like to have companies come to Iroquois County, we'd like to support them, but not as much. You know, I mean, we're that number's out there. That number's out there, and so then we're going to say, well, we want you to come, but we're going to cut that back because we don't Um, there is one thing. I'll probably send a draft to the committee. I've been working this summer on financial policies. There are a lot of things that should be documented that are not. Things like our, our capital, um, our fixed asset policy, what our um, depreciation limits are, what our useful lives are, etc. There, it, it goes through a whole myriad uh, financial policies are a whole myriad. There's one piece that started driving this, and that relates to the grant, the new regulation for uni uniform grant guidance that became effective last November requires policies in grants. Um, I did, um, Clifton Larson Allen drafted some policies for us. It's maybe 20 pages of policies related to grants that conform to that guidance. Those have to be, there was just recently, it, at first, the deadline to have um, those approved was November of 2017. That was pushed back to November of 2018. So we have time, um, but what I want to do is put them in conjunction with these other policies I'm drafting. I haven't um, given you drafts of those because I've really started working on them this summer and I wasn't in a position where I thought they were far enough along. Now that we have those grant ones, there's quite a bit there 
to read through and start to digest. I sent the grant policies to Dee, to Joel Moore, and to Eric Sacy, um, and asked them to review them for anything. I made some notes through them where some of the mostly uh, personnel listings of who's responsible for what didn't quite coordinate with our um, set up here. But um, I'll probably be sending you those to start work on. It, it'll be a process because at this point it's about uh, 50 pages long. So it will take some time to read and digest. But I'll probably send that in the next 30 days. There's still some blanks in there. I'm trying to do some research on what other counties do. Um, the biggest open spot right now is a debt policy. You know, typically though you would define what your approach is to debt, when it's used, when it's not, what the criteria are. Since we don't have debt, that's a little more difficult for me to even address. So, but I'll be sending that out so you can at least start to read all those and we can start to talk through those at our meetings and address them. Okay. That's it. Mm -hmm. Next up, historic cash trend for various entities. Yeah, has everybody got a copy of that? Taking a look at it. Or nothing. About a, some issues, but nothing that's a surprise. Mm -mm. Claims. We should have the claims list in front of them. Any questions on any of the claims? Okay, now that, I entertain a motion to approve them. So moved. Motion by Dan Raymond. Is there a second? Very down some seconds. Questions? Amanda, call the roll, please. Hall? Yes. Bills? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Raymond? Yes. Anderson? Yes. And it's old business for the Finance Committee. And new business for the Finance Committee. And a motion to adjourn. So moved. Dan Second. Raymond, Russell Bills, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Meeting adjourned.